Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to talk a little about weeds, and especially, when do weeds start to hurt yield, Darren? Well, Brent, you know, my motto has always been, all weeds must die, and that's become the motto of our show, Ag PhD. And we get calls from viewers and emails that say, why do all the weeds have to die? Can't you just let those other plants grow? There aren't that many of them out in fields. <laughs> yeah, we do get quite a few emails that say, well, you can use this weed to do us this certain thing. And uh, this other weed, oh, it has these other benefits. And this weed is great for the monarch butterflies. And this weed is nice for that. You know what? <laughs> it, it's still a weed. The problem is if we want to raise great corn or great soybeans or great wheat, if we have other plants growing out there, we're not going to raise the crop that we should. Well, the first thing we've got to do is eat, Brian. And if we're going to decrease right. our food production, trying to save a weed here or there, there's going to be problems. So when we look at increasing our production in fields, we have to control weeds at critical times in the growth cycle of those plants. Like, for example, with our soybean crop. Our soybeans start flowering, well, right about now. And once they start flowering and reproducing and putting pods on and filling those soybeans out in the pods, they're drawing in a whole bunch of nutrients. If we've got plants that are in the field competing for sunlight, water, and nutrients with our soybean crops, especially in the middle part of the season in the month of July and early August, that can be really damaging to our yield. With corn, a lot of the yield in our corn fields are determined very early in the season. So we've got to protect those corn fields from weeds. If we can knock those weeds out so our corn plants can get all the sunlight, water, and nutrients in possible early in the season, we're going to maximize our production in the fields. Coming back to all the people that think these weeds are so beneficial and everything, what I would encourage people to do is if you really think a weed is very important, just grow an entire field of it and try to kill all the crop that's growing in that weed field. And then you can produce lots of that weed. Oh, Brian, you're just, you're just nuts. <laughs> Brian, and Brian doesn't like weeds any more than I do. But Yeah, but oh, the whole thing, Darren, is now it's not a weed. It actually is, is the, crop. the crop. It's exactly. just like sunflowers. When Darren and I were growing up, we used to hate sunflowers. We'd be out there cutting them, pulling them, spraying them down. But you know what? There are farmers across our state and across the entire country that raise sunflowers. So there's just a good example of a weed in one crop. But really, that could be a crop. Okay, well, let's just think about it this way. Let's say that you want to raise the most corn you can raise. Are you going to raise more corn when you have a whole field of it? Or if you just plant a couple of plants out in your yard or out in a tree belt or... <laughs> or somewhere else where it's got all this competition. Of course you're gonna do better. When you cultivate those rows, you've got all this corn right together. You plant it at the perfect spacing. You give it just the right amount of food. It's a lot easier to feed plants when you're raising them as a crop. Now, if you just scatter a bunch of mixed seed around, and yes, there may be a beneficial value to all these different plants, but they're in the wrong place. We've gotta plant them where we need them to be. I'm not saying wipe out every milkweed, wipe out every ragweed in the whole world, no, those plants are going to be beneficial for something, just not when they're out in the middle of our field that we're trying to raise food on. Okay, so basically what we said here is if you want to raise some weeds, go ahead and raise weeds as a crop. But the thing is, there in, in a lot of areas, there are specific weeds that you can't raise. And so, for example, if I decide I'm going to raise a field of leafy spurge, it is a primary noxious weed in our county and in our state. And so the county has the right to come into any area that I own if I don't control my leafy spurge and they'll kill it off. So even if I was gonna raise it as a crop, the county has the right, since it's been declared a primary noxious weed, to come and kill it for me. All right, Brian, we're gonna get a little nuts here. So let's try and wrap this up. When we talk about weed control, it's important to kill those weeds at times where they're critical for yield development in your crop. For example, when we get into September and it's the end of the season, and the crop's already made, weed control is not the first thing on farmers' minds, and right. those weeds are not going to damage our yield. But early on in the season, when that yield is being determined, it is so critical to keep those weeds out. That's very important. And as Brian so aptly pointed out, you know, there are a few weeds you are required by law to control. They're primary noxious weeds, and it's important to control those at any point during now, the season. Now, even if we haven't hurt yield by those weeds coming in late in the season, they could build up the seed bank, and so you could have problems going into future years, and that's the reason why a lot of farmers want to control weeds late in the season, besides early in the season when yield's affected. Well, one of the weeds that I always want to control is our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to get it under control on your farm coming up later in the show. <laughs>